Hello, you're listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us today. In studio today, we're talking with Dr. Emilio Sacristan, Professor of Electrical and Biomedical Engineering. He's uh, been such since 1995 and director and founder of the National Center for Medical Instrumentation and Imaging Research. He's here today to talk with us about some of the services that are available to medical researchers and medical startups through his organization. How are you doing today, doctor? Very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. First of all, could you tell us the name of your organization and also um, when it was founded? Yes. The name is a, is a mouthful. It's a National Center for Medical Instrumentation and Imaging Research in Mexico City. And by its uh, name in Spanish, we all call it CI3M, which is uh, the shorter version of our name. And it's a national laboratory funded in part by the Mexican government to promote research and development into medical technologies. And um, now when you say promote research into medical technologies, are you saying that you, uh, you provide startup funding or simply equipment? How deep is your promotion and support? Okay, well, first of all, we, we have uh, state-of-the-art research facilities for conducting all kinds of different research, which include, for example, um, experimental surgical suite. We have several MRI scanners. We have animal facilities. We have printing, bioprinting, ultrasound, CT, and geography, uh, X-ray, we also have a medical instrumentation laboratory, you know, capabilities for doing prototyping, electronics, magnetics, sensors, and tissue engineering. So we, we do all, a little bit of a, all that. A one stop we shop. Ha- yeah, we have all those facilities available to any researcher anywhere that has a project that wants to come and wants to test something. Uh, we do charge a fee for the use of the facilities and for some of the services that we provide. We can get animals. We can provide a veterinarian or an anesthesiologist or a technician or an engineer or, um, you know, whatever the project requires. We also provide services such as um, we'll develop the protocols, we'll design the experiments, we'll analyze the results, we'll put together the files for regulatory bodies and will help with the regulatory procedures, you know, to get permission to do some of the research and also to file for FDA approval, for example. So basically you've got an entire staff of people that are uh, qualified and skilled in these different areas that you mentioned, or are you contracting those services out from people who are say freelance or from other hospitals or organizations? We do both. We have a staff of about 35 people uh, full-time. And then we also have a a long list of partners, such as a neurosurgeon and anesthesiologist, people that we can call for specific projects where we need some help. There are people that uh, we'll bring in on a case-by-case basis. Now, when you have people who are using your facilities and your services, in order to, uh, say, invent new technologies and research new uh, methods and procedures. How much of the patenting do you oversee and do you share in these patents or is that something that goes both ways or is every case different? Well, every case is a little different. We do have certain policies. If employees of the university or employees of the laboratory contributed, they have to be named as inventors. On sponsored research, we usually can sign an agreement where all the rights will be assigned to whoever sponsored the research. So we work a lot with uh, startups, and they'll bring some idea, and we'll work on it, and we'll file patents. And we we can usually work out an agreement where all the patent rights are given over to the sponsor. But, but but we're flexible on this, depending on how much you, you mentioned about funding. Mm-hmm. We do provide some funding for some projects. And, you know, the part that we fund, of course, we retain some of that, at least that proportion of the rights. We do have a way of funding a little bit of the research. And we also have a, a department that helps researchers 
uh, get grants. Okay. So we have kind of a grant writing service. Okay. So we often get researchers, uh, typical case would be a, a doctor has his idea, he brings it to us, we do a few pilot studies, we try it, get some very early data to suggest that this might be an interesting research, and then we'll help the doctor write a grant to actually get funding to do uh, maybe a one, two, three-year project to develop the idea further. So that's one of the services that we provide. And we also provide the service. We also have an expert IP, uh, intellectual property mm -hmm. specialist that helps us patent searches and write up the ads and all that. And of course, then we have patent lawyers and we can either use ours or whatever the sponsor would rather use, but we also provide that service to help protect the technology. What are some of the basic requirements that uh, someone needs to, to meet before you, for lack of a better term, go out on a limb to help them in their invention or their innovative idea? Well, uh, any researcher has an idea that wants to do some research or, or lab, has, you know, has to basically fill out a, a short form explaining what the experiments that he proposes are, what he wants to do. And um, that has to go through uh, our scientific committee that just uh, looks it over. As long as it's not dangerous to anybody, to the equipment, the infrastructure, or, the, or, or our staff, and the researcher is willing to pay for the cost, we are there to serve. So we're very happy to do whatever anybody proposes. In the case that the researcher does not have the funding, then the scientific panel will look into how much we can support the early work. And we usually will say, well, we'll, we'll do some preliminary work free of charge, but um, the condition is that we will have to write a grant together and and ask for the money to go forward because we can't just support any, any wild idea. And, and it usually has to be approved by the scientific committee. So if anybody comes up with some really crazy idea, we might not decide that it's worth uh, funding. Now, uh, finally, uh, how can someone contact you or your organization in order to get more information about your services that you offer? Well, it's it's very simple. You can do it through our webpage at ci3m.mx. And we're in Mexico, and, and we're happy to work with people from all over the world. We actually do. It's not just for Mexicans. <laughs> Absolutely. Great, great. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. It's been a pleasure talking in studio today with Dr. Emilio Sacristan, Professor of Electrical and Biomedical Engineering and Director and Founder of the National Center for Medical Instrumentation and Imaging Research in Mexico City. We've been here discussing some of the services that are available to medical researchers and medical startups, those folks who are uh, thinking about some of the problems that we face and addressing some of those problems Dr. Emilio uh, Sacristran and his company and his staff are readily available to help. It's been great talking with you today, Doctor. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Neil. And Thank you so much. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes.